sharing my secret weapon for training trick success. And I'll give you a little hint. It has to do with going down to the fundamental basics of baton twirling. So with that, let's get back to basics. The very first step to being able to break down and fix any trick is starting with a proper thumb toss and a controlled thumb toss. One very important aspect to a proper thumb toss is where you release it from. And we all have these little thumb toss calluses. And when I began retraining all of my fundamentals, it was about here. And by the time I finished, my callus was way back here. And what I found was releasing the baton a little bit deeper in the web of my thumb right here. So when I'm releasing the baton here, notice how my baton is in here, but I used to release the baton from about here. By releasing the baton deeper in the web of your thumb, you not only have better control, but you're able to place the baton and it gives you a little bit better pattern. So training that, that callus back a little bit will definitely help your thumb tosses. Another important aspect of your thumb toss is where you release the baton from in front of your body. It should theoretically be released right in front of your belly button. So right here, you should set up for your toss so that the baton is on pattern and ready to be released right at your midline. I've mentioned the pattern of your toss several times now, but I think one more important strategy to practice is tossing against the wall. I talked about this in my warm up video, and I not only do them with my little hand flips, but I also do them with my high tosses, especially. So, anytime I was having trouble with my placement, if I was tossing it too far out, or even side to side, getting against a wall can help you fix your pattern and your placement, especially if it's a trick that goes straight up in the air, like a spin or an illusion. So tossing right up against the wall, ideally you should be able to toss it with your um, fist right up against the wall, but that's a little too risky for me. So I pull it back just a few inches. And it might be wise to start a little bit further back at first and then work your way a little bit closer, little by little, in order to not have the baton ricochet, especially when you're practicing your placement at first. When it comes to high tosses, it's the very same thing, but remember you really wanna to practice tossing it from the center, center of your body, right at your belly button, and really practicing good tossing technique. Another important aspect of any toss, no matter how big or small the trick is, is your body positioning. Your shoulders and your hips should be square to the front, your shoulders should be back and down, your core tight, and that will help you better release the baton and be consistent with your releases. When you're ready to begin training a new trick, you need to separate the baton and the body in order to focus on not only the timing of the toss, but also the placement. So here I'm marking my starting point for my first example trick, which is a toss walkover. That way I can be consistent with my starting point every single time. Here I'm going to do an, a little air baton toss just to see exactly how far I will travel, and I'll mark my ending point with another tape X. That way I can continue to execute the element multiple times and just to see how consistent my distance is. Now from here, I will start practicing an air baton toss to count exactly how long it would take me to get from point A to point B. And I've noticed that if I take into account two extra counts for a spot and a catch, it will take me about six counts. So the next thing I have to do is train the placement of the toss. And to do this, I toss from the starting point to the ending point, making sure that it's a six count toss, and then I can put it all together in one successful trick. Here, 
Here, I'm doing the same exact thing with my second example, which will be a toss illusion. Now obviously, a toss illusion doesn't move as much as a toss walkover, but you don't want to toss it directly on top of yourself. For me, I like to catch a toss illusion just slightly at my left shoulder, but it, the toss itself it goes pretty much directly straight up and down. Now I'll do the same thing that I did for the walkover where I count exactly how long it takes me to complete the trick, plus two extra counts for a spot and a catch, and then I will begin to add the toss. So here I'm isolating the toss, the baton aspect of it, making sure that it's a perfect six count toss. Every single time, straight up and down, this is one that you can practice up against a wall before putting it all together in one perfect toss illusion. When first learning a trick, it can be easy to fall into a pattern of using your upper body or jumping on tosses in an attempt to get the baton higher. You can develop the strength to do this without using your upper body and without jumping by drilling. So how does all of this training for trick success translate to the competition floor? There are a couple of questions that you should be asking yourself before either putting a trick into a routine or putting it even further on the competition floor. So question number one that you should ask yourself is when can I be sure that a trick has been trained to the point that it can be put in my routine for competition? And to answer this question, I have what I call the 80% rule. If you are practicing a trick in your daily practice and you do it 10 times in a row, you should be able to catch it eight out of those 10 times comfortably. If it's below that 80%, there's a pretty good chance that you're not mentally ready for it to be in the routine or physically ready for it to be in the routine. So your goal should be to train that trick up to its full 80% or higher before it should go on the competition floor. The second question that you should be asking yourself is when should I take out or review something that's in my choreography? So let's say that you have a trick in your routine that is constantly a stumbling block for you. You always get to that trick, whether it's a mental block or you're just not quite ready for the trick or you've trained it and there's just something not quite right with it. When do I take it out of a routine? If you feel like you're at risk for developing a mental block for a certain trick, I have a couple of options for how you can proceed without those kind of negative feelings. In the moment, one option that you can use is stopping and drilling the trick five times in a row making yourself realize that you are capable of the trick. You just might be having an off day on your timing or for some other reason, you're just not catching it, but just centering yourself, taking a deep breath and doing it five times in a row or doing a section that it's involved in five times in a row can help you regain that mental confidence to perform the trick. One thing that really helped me was doing the trick before it the trick that was bothering me and the trick after it. That way it was put in context with the same things that it was in my routine. That way not only did I know I could do the trick, but I could do what came before and after it successfully. Your second option would be to replace the trick. And if you're like me, this might feel like a failure and I hated replacing tricks. It made me feel like I just, I wasn't capable and I was giving up on it. By replacing the trick in the routine, it allowed my routine as a whole to be more successful, but it also gave me the space that I needed to retrain the trick by itself outside of the routine and develop more positive feelings toward it before I put it back in. The third strategy I'm going to give you is kind of along the lines of the first one, and that's that asking yourself, if I put a new connection before or after this trick, would that change the outcome? For me, sometimes when a trick just wasn't quite right, if I simply changed how I entered the trick or what came immediately before it or immediately after it, it changed it entirely. Whether it was a different frame of mind or a different pattern that the baton was entering into the trick, it really doesn't quite matter as long as you just experiment with entrances and exits to certain tricks that are giving you trouble. watching this video, you have all the tools you need in your toolbox to successfully break down or master any trick you set your mind to. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment below with any questions that you might have. In the meantime, work hard and be bold.